Francis Frankfort Moore was an Irish novelist and brother-in-law of Bram Stoker, whose work is almost entirely forgotten nowadays. Born in 1855 in Limerick, the son of a jeweller, while being educated at the Belfast Academical Institute, he published his first collection of poetry in 1872, receiving the support of Longfellow himself. In 1876 he became a journalist for the Belfast Newsletter, reporting on the 1878 Congress of Berlin, and in 1879 on the Zulu War. He initially married Alice Grace Balcombe, sister of Florence Balcombe, who married Bram Stoker, and then presumably following Alice's death in 1901, he married Dorothea Hatton. He died at Lewes, Sussex in 1931. Moore wrote voluminously, penning over 60 books of fiction as well as plays and non-fiction. He wrote both historical novels as well as adventure stories of the sea, including titles such as The Slaver of Zanzibar, The Fate of the Black Swan, or The Mutiny on the Albatross. However, we shall focus on his mixed collection of mostly fantastic fiction, The Other World from 1904. A providential escape is the worst of the lot and doesn't quite fit, as it seems to have been written in a very whimsical tone. Essentially, Miss Viola Compton manages to get two big admirers while travelling aboard a cruise ship, one Teddy Summers and one Jack Norgate, who happen to be friends. She picks Jack and Summers is crushed, but then Jack disappears, having fallen overboard. Viola has a vision, quote-unquote, of Summers having pushed Norgate overboard and accuses him of murder. He privately admits to it, but then it turns out Jack just fell over by accident and then got rescued, which makes Summers look like a fool. Magic in the web of it concerns a young man, the last of the Harland family, who have a tendency to go fight in every war fought by England since the conquest, and who apparently keep getting themselves killed in every single one of them, though no one in the story seems to pick up on this point. Harlan's mother hopes that his fiancée Madge will keep him from joining the British campaign in the Transvaal, but he goes anyway. But one night he suddenly shows up at home, in military garb and wounded from battle, though he was reported to have been in the middle of South Africa only a few days ago, and thus could not possibly be here. He is there anyway, and he has Madge bind up his wound with a bit of lace he got for her from his mother, which had come down from the Medici family. The next morning, Harland is gone. However, when he does come back, he has a wound on his arm, and it is bound up by the piece of lace that comes from the Medici. The baseless fabric has a man travel to the middle of nowhere for the sake of his client, and being told over and over again by everyone he meets along the way that the place won't be the same when old Denny Callan is dead. Arriving at the place, he is finally told that Denny had died at a ripe old age, but that his one gripe was that, 30 years ago, the artist who chose him as a model for his statue never got to finish his head to show off Denny's locks of curly hair, of which he was very proud. And later that same night, the narrator is witness to Denny going to finally do something about it with the sculptor despite both of them being dead. Black as he is painted is a republication of Moore's 1896 novella, Dr. Kumadhi of Ashanti. It concerns a native Ashanti man, educated and receiving a doctorate in Britain, who nevertheless is treated like dirt by the British administration of Gambia. The commissioner's daughter's response, that she would as rather marry a baboon as him, makes the man very angry and makes him use his witch mother's magic to make her fiancé and later husband act like a baboon in the hopes of having him humiliated and then shot. But Dr. Kumadhi, having lost the magic stone he used, put an end to his plan and to Dr. Kumadhi in a rather grisly way. The ghost of Barmorf Manor is a very slight affair, focusing on a woman who dreams to be at an unfamiliar house every Christmas, having the same dream for five years, and then turns out to be the ghost that haunts a certain manor of her relatives every Christmas, also having made the young man of the house fall in love with her five years ago. 
The Blood Oranges concerns an Italian Marchesa orchestrating to befuddle and then stab to death an Englishman who used to make love to her sister, and that made her sister's husband kill her, and that somehow is the Englishman's fault. Finally, the strange story of North Haven Priory has a man invite a few friends to a hotel built within the confines of an ancient priory, which one of his ancestors had condemned as having been the location of a black mass during the reign of Henry VIII, and they soon discover that one of the rooms has a habit of killing its occupants, making them die of fear, and leaving behind a burnt gauntlet mark on the shutters once whatever does it is finished. The collection is a bit of a mixed bag, with about half the stories being interesting, and about half being more or less along the lines of sentimental Edwardian ghost fiction.